Right, this is Year 1 Biopsychology for AQA Psychology um, and in this brief video we're just looking at the hormones involved in triggering the fight or flight response. Um, and there are several different um, er areas that you need to be aware of um, within the brain. The first one is the amygdala, which is this small structure just here. Um, all of these structures in the middle um, of the brain are called that's called the limbic system and the amygdala is part of that and you'll come across it again when we study aggression in year two um, so that's one of the parts that's involved the hypothalamus is this small section here which is involved in loads and loads of different um, different processes uh, maintaining homeostasis uh, loads and loads of different things we'll come across it many times. Um, the pituitary gland is this gland here at the base of the brain which um, as you remember when we looked at the endocrine system has many many different functions within the endocrine system um, <coughs> and uh, produces many different hormones. Um, then the other area that you need to be aware of is the adrenal cortex. If you remember the adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys and the cortex is the outer part of the adrenal glands. So those are the, the key areas um, and glands that are involved in the um, triggering the fight or flight response. And the first thing that happens when we hear a threat or uh, detect a threat is that the amygdala sends a message to the hypothalamus. This is, for example, if someone walks up behind you in an alleyway, you hear footsteps. And the amygdala detects a threat and it alerts the hypothalamus. Um, what then happens is the hypothalamus releases something called CRH, which is corticotrophin releasing hormone, you don't need to know the name, CRH is enough, um, into the bloodstream. If you remember when we looked at feedback loops on, on in the last lesson, we looked at the fact that the hypothalamus will release what's called a releasing hormone. So that's um, released into the bloodstream, the CRH. And then the pituitary gland releases ACTH, which is a short for adrenocorticotrophic hormone. Again, just knowing ACTH is fine here. So, so far we've got the amygdala, detects a threat, alerts the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus releases CRH, and then the pituitary gland releases ACTH. Um, and what then happens is two separate things, and they're both related to the adrenal glands. First of all, the adrenal cortex, well, at, at the same time, the adrenal cortex releases cortisol, which if you remember is a key hormone involved in the stress response, um, and it does a number of things, but including um, increasing our blood sugar so that we've got a ready supply of energy if we need to fight or flee, um, and it also suppresses the immune system. Um, the adrenal medulla, which if you remember is the inner part here um, of the adrenal gland, Adre and that releases adrenaline. Um, so maybe the way to remember it is cortex for cortisol, it's the same start of the word. The adrenal medulla releases adrenaline, um, and then adrenaline triggers loads of those physiological changes that we talked about associ associated with the sympathetic nervous system, uh, increased heart rate, increased breathing, um, increased blood sugar, reducing your digestion, all of many of those different things. So that's what we call the fight or flight response. And then if you think about the fact that we have feedback loops so that um, so that the levels of adrenaline and cortisol don't just keep increasing um, forever, what then happens is um, the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland detect that the cortisol and adrenaline are circulating in our system um, and that feedback loop may basically means they then stop releasing CRH and ACTH. So then levels of hormones in our bloodstream stabilise. We have adrenaline and cortisol in our bloodstream at, at the level at which um, fight or flight is triggered and maintained for as long as it's needed. So that's what's going on um, in order when fight or flight is triggered in order to um, <coughs> in in terms of hormones, sorry. Right. Um, so just to summarize how that works with a feedback loop, I'll skip to, to the next slide. 
Um, the hypothalamus sends the CRH to the pituitary gland, which sends ACTH. The adrenal glands then secrete adrenaline and cortisol. Um, the hypothalamus then stops secreting CRH. The pituitary gland stops secreting ACTH. And then level, levels of adrenaline and cortisol stop increasing and stabilise until the threat is passed, at which point the parasympathetic nervous system uh, takes over and rest and digest occurs. Okay, oh, and just to um, give you a little bit more information about adrenaline and cortisol, adrenaline um, does lots of things. Uh, these are some, some of the key things that adrenaline does. Blood flow to the muscles, heart rate, pupil dilation, rapid shallow breathing, blood sugar. Cortisol increase, increases our blood pressure and our blood sugar. Um, they both increase blood sugar but in different ways. Um, <coughs> and cortisol suppresses the immune system. Okay, so that is fight or flight um, and the hormones that work behind it in a nutshell for you.